So Seamus, I hear you've been playing some filament recently. Uh, I actually shelved filament to play New World, but I'm into filament. Okay, but yeah, I did play it a little bit this week. I've been playing it off and on as well. It's um, one of the, as I mentioned, I think the first time I talked about it, one of the people in the in the comments for the diecast said, "Oh, I think Paul would really love this. Like it's it's got that whole thing where the." the ending boss area like has totally different mechanics but they're building on the same mechanics as throughout the game so it's like this i'm looking forward to it. i haven't actually gotten there yet um but i've been playing it you know a little bit here and there it takes a lot of mental energy like it's it's not something you can just kind of like sit back and have a good old lazy time playing <laughs> like you really got to engage with it right yeah it's not like a game of solitaire where you're just like put the things in order and you know just relaxing kind of puzzle it's yeah, yeah. it's real work it's a real serious the real serious puzzle game so uh but it, so a couple things struck me one is something that you mentioned i think that the difficulty is kind of all over the place or it feels like it's all over the place where yeah where you can be like i'm you know doing this puzzle and like okay that makes sense i see how this works and okay it makes sense i see how this works and then like Oh, what? Well, how is what even like what four dimensional chess is this? How would what are you expecting me to do with this? I had one like that where I was absolutely stuck. I slammed my head against it for over an hour and I felt like I've exhausted this. Like I've tried every combination. And so I shelved you brute forced it. it? Right, brute forced it and still didn't solve it. So it's like, oh, great. Well, it's unsolvable. No problem. <laughs> and um, then I came back to it a full week later. More than a week. It was like a week and a half later. I came back to it and I was looking at the puzzle. And instead of trying to think of how to solve it, I started metagaming and thinking, what clever shenanigans might the game de designer be trying to do like what's a good hook for a level and i started think well i already noticed you there's this little you kind of wrap around some pillars spiraling inward and then hook and then spiral back outward and mm. i was like well what if the whole level was just that and I tried that. So I felt like I didn't I didn't visualize it in my head. I just ran around, you know, hook around a pillar and then spiral inward. And then once you get inside, you hook around another pillar and then spiral back out. And that was it. And it was like 10 seconds to solve. And I'm like, <laughs> that's weird. I felt like I didn't I didn't visualize the solution beforehand. I wasn't picturing anything. I was just like, all right, well, what's what's something a game designer might do? And then I tried it, and it mm. instantly worked. Oh, interesting. Trying to work back into the, the puzzle idea itself. Right. Like, yeah, what's the concept that the designer might have, might have began the puzzle with? Because that, that's often, you know, oh, I'll... I'll do a puzzle where you got to do the thing on the right first, but then I'll set the puzzle up so that it looks like you really have to do the thing on the left first. Like that's a lot of puzzles is just mm. a feint to, to get you to start off wrong. And then the real solution is to just not do the most obvious thing. In fact, a lot of the early puzzles that I would plow through in um, filament, was just you see a puzzle and whatever the most obvious thing is to start with don't do that do do the opposite right oh it obviously the the most obvious thing is hook around this pillar and go over here so i'm going to try this to solve the puzzle without doing that pillar first and that would be the solution yeah i also noticed that if i if I'm looking at the board and there are a couple places where it's like, oh, there's only one way to approach this little section, then I would just go and like solve that section first 
and then look at the board and be like, okay, I've solved this little thing. This is not in the middle or whatever. Now what do I have to do to pick up all the other loose ends? And that worked pretty right. well where, where it was like, okay, or solve it backward from the end. Like, okay, how do I get out of this place? Right? Like what's the end of the solution look like? And then, okay, well, now that I know what that looks like, then like, how can I kind of you know, work backward through the rest of the puzzle? But yeah, it's, it's tricky. It's very interesting. I like the puzzle more than I like the world. I am so not into the person on the radio. It <laughs> sounds yeah. it sounds very amateurish. It sounds like somebody who's not an actress. It sounds like just like, you know, a developer. I don't know. May maybe it right. is one of the right. developers. Just reading copy. And it doesn't have a lot of emotion to it. And even the dialogue being conveyed isn't it's like kind of being a very mild jerk to you real, real mild, but it's like, <laughs> I'm not, yeah. it's, it, it need to be either way nicer or way meaner. It needs to either, you yeah. know, I'm your buddy. Yeah, it's not or mean I'm enough GLaDOS. to be funny. Right. Yeah. It's not, it's not funny in GLaDOS style, but it's also not like, oh, I'm so thankful you're here. Please. Anything I can do to help you, I would, but I can't make any sense of these puzzles. It's like, kind of like, oh, you're taking a long time with these puzzles, aren't you? It's like, are you the one stuck in the cockpit, lady? What are you? Right. You. What, what, who do you think you are? You've been here. You by your own admission, you've been stuck for two weeks. So I think you can just back off. That it took me five minutes to do that one. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Oh, yeah. It's it is a little weird. What struck me as as very strange is the whole design of the spaceship. Because it looks like a very posh college dorm. Like it's this right. very, you know, there's like a gym room and the, the common area. It's very cool. I mean, like I'd love to live there. It's yeah. amazing. But like not spaceship in any way. None of it says spaceship to me. Right. Maybe the first couple of hallways feel a little bit spaceshipy. But the thing that I think of when I, it's got this upstairs loft area that reminds me of the your loft dorm in art college in the longest journey art college in <gasps> space yeah yeah it's yeah it's very it's very college in space that's the feeling i get from it it's like you know and everyone's got nicknames right and it's like oh you arrived at the dorm and you're gonna get your nickname and there's like the the dorm mom but she lives off campus you know and she's the captain or whatever <laughs> it's a weird little game it's very strange it's a very strange world. And then, like, the whole, I don't know, spoilers for Filament, everybody. Uh, turns out, like, the planet that they're orbiting is actually this giant hologram, and it's making people disappear or something. It's just all very, all very odd. None of it's very science fiction. It's kind of, yeah, it's kind of strange. It turns out she's been in orbit for all these weeks, and now she's racked up all this tuition debt. And that's why you've got to get her <laughs> out of there. I, right and well there's like this this corporation that runs everything right and like you have to follow all their rules but it's like it smacks of college to me again it's kind of like these rules aren't that like overbearing it's just that there are a right. lot of them and like and you chose to be here it's not like they kidnapped you from somewhere or whatever like it's very right it's very strange it's got this kind of like teenage college student angst to it where it's like really is that the best you can come up with Right, like this is supposedly an evil corporation, but it's like, well, shit. I mean, I worked at McDonald's and it was more dystopian than this. <laughs> yeah, right. This is just annoying. Uh, so anyway, Filament, it's it's a funny little game. But I mean, the puzzles are very impressive. Yeah, the, yeah, the puzzles aren't screwing around. Well, the, every fifth puzzle will kick your ass. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how far you've gotten up in the upper decks. Some of those are like quite, quite uh, mind bending, like the multiple different colors and all kinds of things. Right. I've done a few, well, you know, I've done like the first four of a lot of different puzzle pads. You do the first oh, four and yeah. you're like, easy, easy, easy. Oh, okay. This is the real puzzle. All right. I'll just, I, rather than sitting here and like doing the first real puzzle, I'll just go to the next kiosk right next to it and do the four <laughs> yeah. easy puzzle, which is actually a bad idea because the 
you want to do them in order because they're building on the con like when you're doing multiple colors you know number five is going to build on the stuff you learned in the first four so like you don't want to like do those first four and then go away and forget everything and then come back and do number five so that was actually really irresponsible of me but i just wanted to see all the different kinds of puzzles that the game had to offer yeah yeah i did Plus, that a few times too where it yeah. gets stuck and then it's like ah ah no i'm not having fun anymore i'm gonna go do something else in this same video game you're making me work for my dose of dopamine i'm just gonna continue to take the easy route <laughs> right until there aren't any more easy routes left then you just look up a walkthrough i haven't done it yet but it crossed my mind yeah yeah it's like man i i don't want to open that pandora's box quite yet right yeah it's very easy to ruin a puzzle game for yourself there is nothing worse than the feeling of looking up the solution and realizing you were either very close or oh i definitely should have got that if i i should have i should have kept working on that and that's just the worst feeling and you can't even blame anybody for it once in a while you'll see a puzzle game and you'll like look up the solution and you'll be like i don't even know why that's a solution that's a bunch of nonsense or <laughs> oh that's like really annoying to execute like that takes forever you know especially ones that have execution challenges like oh you have to jump some like this doesn't apply to filament but like a game where you have to like jump or shoot accurately during the puzzle and you're like, I'm, I'm glad I didn't, like, keep doing that one. Groping around for that yeah. solution. Because that would have taken forever to get the execution down. Like, you need just the right... You need to see the solution, but you also need to execute it just properly. And if you don't execute it properly, you might think, oh, that's not the solution. I should try something else. The, the classic being a... You know, your pressure plate, you run over a pl pressure plate and it opens a door and then you run back and the door shuts before you get to it. And you're like, oh, OK, these are too far apart. So that's not the solution. But no, it is. You just have to run the route absolutely perfectly that, that I've right. gotten bit by stuff like that. And I hate that. And when I looked that up and I realized, oh, that was a solution, you just expected absolute perfect like speed run level perfection to get through this door Ugh, that's not a puzzle that's that sucks and all the play testers are like yeah we, we can do it it's no problem it's easy right i've been playing this game for six months i didn't find it hard <laughs> right hey, can you make it more challenging i you know it's kind of boring i found that I, they're actually all three of those things that we talked about are in the witness um that the thing the puzzle where like you look up the solution and it's like i don't know why that is the way that it is but okay um which is the one oh, in yeah. the the wrecked ship there was just one for me at least uh just one place where that was where i was like i don't know how to solve this like that i'm completely stumped and so i just looked it up and it's like oh yeah you have to like listen to the drips of the water and also like the creaking of the the iron beams and then you have to go like go and look at this other spot in the ship and it was like oh, oh no i'm i'm just gonna look at the solution so that one and then um the the thing i i really liked about the witness is that it has a procedurally generated puzzle section so that you can't just look up the answer to the puzzles like and it's timed so you can't even like feed the puzzle into some solver or whatever like because like it takes too long so you really do yeah. have to understand all the puzzle principles and be able to solve it in order to beat that section and it's optional so it's like it's fantastic i love it cool yeah i remember one of those in the witness where you it was the one about tracing around the leaves and the last one was like it felt like it broke its own rules like i you know I've tried what, there was something that felt like it should be the solution, and you execute it, and it's like, no, wrong. And I'm like, no, no game, that, uh, I'm correct. <laughs> can we, can the ref yeah. come in here? I'd like a ruling, because this obeys all the rules you've taught me. 
this is intuitively the answer. And then I look it up online and it's like something else. And I'm like, I don't know why you're saying my answer is wrong and this one is correct. This one seems to, you know, violate the rule of, I, I forget, like, don't go through a branch or something. Mm, yeah. Yeah, there was, I think there was one that was like, the branch was broken off. And so you had to like go and look at the branch on the ground and then like figure out where it would have been or something. I don't know. It, uh, it does get pretty, pretty convoluted at, there at the end. All right. You want to do some mailbags? Sure. Dear Diecast, so the Syndicate faction, Purple, on my new world server just had their first bait of major drama. Okay, so here's what happened. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole email. It's, um... This is a classic MMO move. Somebody's in charge of a guild or a group of some kind. A bunch of players put their money into the treasury. And then one of the people in charge, somebody with, you know, some sort of managerial powers, just cleans it out and leaves. Now, in the real oh, world, just that's like a called... cult in real life. Right. Well, in real life, that's, you know, embezzling and you can call the cops. But in the game, that's just, you know... That's the game. Uh, the trick is this guy was the leader of the guild and he took the treasury and he switched factions um, and he used the money that he took with him to turn around and declare war on the people he just robbed. <laughs> and wow. the next in line, the next person in line was a guy who hadn't even signed on in days. And that was the only one that could, like, get things, you know, reorganize the structure or whatever. Like, with somebody who was not around. Um, this drama kind of, here's the end of the email. This drama kind of reminds me of what you were talking about with your Goldshire post. It makes me think that world, New World is indeed going to be pretty successful. Have you seen any drama on your servers? Jennifer S Snow. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, I haven't seen any drama like that. Um, the, the one thing I am noticing, the, the drama I'm seeing is, um, well, you know what? I shouldn't say that. I pay so little attention to the faction wars. I, when I go into global chat, it's everybody bitching about, oh, purple is being lame or exploiting or. Oh, yellow knows they can't win, so they're just trying to ruin the game for others. Or green is lazy. You know, like assigning personality attributes to these random, you know, random groups of people. Sure. It is amazing. It is an amazing sort of study in the mechanics of bigotry. <laughs> like, like you, this is just a random group of people. But they're annoying you because they're your opposition. They're the opposing team. And you'll find something that annoys you and then ascribe that as a negative personality trait to everybody that flies under that color. And everybody yeah. talks about like this. Like, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure this is the best. It just so happens that they have created the best personality sorter ever. And just by a miracle, everybody who joins green is a coward who, <laughs> you know, we've, we found a way to, to detect cowardice in human being. We just let them play this game and wait for them to join green. <laughs> it's a, it's, yeah. This is a perfect sorting algorithm for humans. Right. Because literally all of their claims are nonsense. Green does not have any defining attributes other than how many people are in it. Well, and where their guild master is, right? Right, right. But it's even weird because like green isn't even a single team. It's like you form a company and your company has to belong to one of the three factions. So when you're talking about green, you're talking about like... A handful of different guilds. It's like it's like saying, um, dang it, I I don't know my sports terminology, but like um major sports are are divided into like leagues or whatever. Like all these teams yeah. on the east coast play each other, and then 
all the West Coast plays each other, and then they'll meet, you know, in the middle. East Coast versus West Coast or whatever, right? It sounds like, sounds right. Sure. And, but actually, that you could find, a, that's an actual difference. Like, there can be economic differences between East and West. But, like, if everybody's in the same, <laughs> you're all just people playing this video game. So, there's no difference between your colors. I don't know. It's interesting. One thing I do want to talk about is the currency crisis going on in New World. Hmm. And it's a weird kind of currency crisis. Now, normally, MMOs suffer from inflation. Every time you kill a monster, it drops gold pieces because, you know, saber tooth tigers famously always have a couple bucks on them. Yeah. Just, you know, hanging around their jeans or whatever. <laughs> right. Every month, so you're always creating money, and money will enter the economy faster than it exits. So the price of goods goes up over time. And this is really great, like as a WoW player that came to the game really late. Everybody <laughs> had accumulated at the end game, right? And somebody's just like, you know what? I think I want to, um, be do this profession weaving or i don't even remember what the professions are maybe armor smithing or something <clears throat> sure. but i need a ton of iron ore well i, I don't want to run around and gather iron ore for three days let me just look on the auction house and you know lots of people would do this so the price of iron ore was sky high for a player like what you know one iron ore node would give me as much gold as I could earn doing 12 quests, right? Like, I could spend yeah. an hour doing quests or mine one node and just throw it on the auction house. And I don't remember and, you if know, it lasted, but for a certain amount of time, there was this weird inversion of pricing where, like, the low-tier metals and stuff were actually worth more per item than the high tier stuff just because no one wanted to go back to the low tier zones and farm for copper or whatever i that's exactly what i was what was going on with i was playing in that time and yeah no and essentially the high level players were paying me to gather up their stuff and because um your money increases is it exponentially Hmm. I don't know. Geometrically, maybe. Yeah. Geometrically, I'll bet. It just like something that's peanuts for a level 60 character, just absolutely nothing for them is for me enough to get my mount. Right. So when, when the game was new, people would like, you can buy your mount at, at 40, but you've got to actually get, wait until you're 50 before you have enough money to buy it. And I always had enough money. <laughs> At the moment it became available, just walk in and buy it in cash. Yeah. But anyway, <clears throat> New World has the opposite problem. That problem of inflation is when you've got more money going into the economy than leaving. And it just accumulates in people's bank accounts. And people complain, like, I can't get more money. Like, I've hit the money cap, whatever it is, you know, a billion dollars. <laughs> and I've got a billion dollars and it won't let me get more. So, um... New World has the opposite problem, where money leaves the economy faster than it enters. Hmm. Now, this wasn't true at launch. And he, and so I've been like trying to figure out what's going on here. And it's tricky for me because I've been playing this weird solo where I... Re, this weird solo thing where I refuse to join a faction. And faction oh, yeah. quests pay money. Pay, pay good mid about money. And so I've been starved for cash, but I thought it was just me. I, I thought, you know, I'm always broke. And in fact, as I leveled up from my 20s to my 30s, my bank account was going down because uh, you repair your gear with money. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Do you want to rub $30 on your hammer and make it all better? <laughs> the, whole, the whole thing about a hammer wearing out is also kind of nonsense but whatever right right <laughs> right um so but you just like smear your money all over it and it becomes healed and it's brand new so 
uh, th there are other ways to to repair things, but you know that uh, you can build repair kits, but you're limited on repair parts, and it's a whole thing. Anyway, um, so my money was going down, but I thought it was just me, and then I found out no, everybody's going through this. But I'm like, but at launch, like my first character just made more and more money. So what changed? Why why are we starving for cash now? Hmm. And my guess is every town, towns are controlled by guilds. They're called companies. And what you and there are geez, I think like eight crafting stations in town. Like the smeltery, the weavery, the tannery. Um and to do higher level stuff you need higher level crafting stations and they can only be upgraded once a day once a day one crafting station can be up upgraded hmm. and when the game was new so you'd go into town and this town would have you know everything's at bullshit level one except they'd have like our smeltery is all the way up to level four or level five. And so you would go to that town to do your smelting or whatever. Okay. That's some specialization going. Right. And so you would, and the more upgraded it is, the more upkeep the people running the town have to pay to keep, to keep yeah. the stuff. If they don't pay enough upkeep, all the stuff gets downgraded. And I've seen messages like this. Smeltery was downgraded. Tannery was downgraded. Weavery, I forget what it's called, was downgraded. Workshop was downgraded. And you're like, oh, probably the the guild boss didn't log in and, you know, pay pay rent or whatever. And it just downgrades the whole town. Huh. And, you know, like, that'll take you a week to get all that. Like, that's... A week of damage. It'll take you a week to like get all those stations upgraded again. So it's a serious setback. So it's anyway, kind of weird so, that like you're not paying to play the game, right? Like you buy the right. game once and then you just play it however much you want. So it's weird that they've got all these mechanics in there to like keep you coming back and like get the guild leader to log in all the time to like keep the station running. Like if you're not paying to be on the servers, wouldn't they just as rather you not? be using their bandwidth right maybe uh maybe it'll automatically be fine as long as there's money in the treasury but if there's no money in the treasury um then the the oh, yeah could be and what will happen is you, your upkeep costs increased every time you you know um upgrade your town and the other thing that happens is people kind of level through the area so when the game's brand new and everybody's level 20 Lots of people are gathered in this particular town and the money's just flowing in. But then everybody starts uh, accumulating at the end game. Nobody's coming down here to bo bullshit newbie zone anymore. Newbie town. Nobody's hanging out there anymore. So now, and that you make your money by people coming to your town and paying taxes every time they craft something, every time they use the trading post. Mm, so sure. You have... So, so you don't want to keep your stuff upgraded if people aren't coming and using it because right. you're just sinking money into it for no reason. Right. Like, imagine a city upgrades its its um. Oh man, we've we've got so much traffic in our city. We better upgrade to wider roads and better traffic and fancy lights and traffic mitigation and we'll install public busing and we're going to do have the, all this infrastructure and just turn this town into Manhattan. And then every like half the people in town move to the next town and nobody comes here anymore. And you've got all of this <laughs> infrastructure that nobody's using now. Like, that's the new world effect. And as pe everybody leveled through the game, they leveled through these cities, all the cities upgraded. Now they're all real expensive. So that's a drain on money. The money's now exiting the economy real fast because these towns are expensive. And, and also, players are learning to avoid... <laughs> I had uh, one of the towns I went to. It doesn't tell you what taxes are like until you get to the town. I war and it, but when you get there, it's like, oh, property tax, low, 
trading is you know medium uh crafting taxes are high and across the board i walked into this one you know town i walked in and across the board all taxes were set to extreme 25 percent, which is apparently the maximum uh, <laughs> wow. which was brutal like i tried to buy something in the trading post for 400 dollars, but with tax it was 500 dollars. <laughs> I'm like, I literally can't afford Yikes. these taxes. Yeah, I literally can't afford this. Uh, so, you know, there's a little lesson. You up the taxes too much and people just will not be able to do business in your town. <laughs> so it was really funny. Yeah, yeah. So I that's what I think is it feels like you can't keep all the towns fully upgraded all the time. Mm not enough people will come in and pay taxes everywhere to you know people just want people want to have the minimum number of hops around the world so they want to go to a town with low taxes and do their business without having to change to any towns three times to do all my crafting so it seems like eventually it will be one or two populous towns and everything else will be a ghost town or just the odd stray newbie leveling through the area. Right. Uh, as somebody pointed out, um, I don't know if it was on Twitter or whatever. I saw it like on Reddit. Somebody screenshot it. But like, who implemented taxes in a friggin' video game? Who is sitting there going, you know what would really make this game fun? I mean, this is a world <laughs> where... I think Penny Arcade so, did a comic on that, right? Where it's like, I don't want to go to this new video game to pay taxes and like, you know, pay rent and stuff. I can do that in real life. I'm trying to escape from all that. Right. This is a world where death doesn't exist. So now we know which of the two forces is stronger. Even in a world where <laughs> death doesn't exist, taxes continue to exist. <laughs> well, maybe the taxes got stronger because it, the death doesn't exist, right? Oh, like right. Maintain the balance or something. Actually, that would make a lot of sense. What are you going to do? You can't kill yourself to escape paying them. Oh, man. That's, that's kind of scary. All right. Um, tech ahead of its time. Can you read that one? Okay. Dear Diecast, I hope you're doing well. We are, thank you. Recently, I watched a video about Sir Cleve Sinclair. Cleve. Cleve Sinclair. And there's a link. A British inventor who made microcomputers and other electronics in the 70s and 80s. His company ultimately went under because they made an electric scooter that was just too ahead of its time. And this made me wonder, have there been any products, could be both hardware or software, that you think were too ahead of their time? And had they been made a decade or two later, who would have killed it? Keep being awesome. Lino. Thank you, Lino. I haven't been talking a long time. Please tell me you have an answer for this. Hmm. I'm um, not the right one to ask about ahead of its time because I don't have a sense of what people want. Like, I'm, I'm like, I'm an anti-salesman. Well, I've it got seems like... Work. Okay, go ahead. Uh, one is we had VR had like four or five attempts vr blew up on the launch pad four or five times over the decades before it finally took off the first i became aware of it was probably in the mid 90s but even then it had been around a while mm. like the nintendo virtual boy was apparently a migraine machine <laughs> um like, the, the headset didn't move. You set it on the table, and then you look through the viewfinder. And the interior display, for whatever reason, was monochrome, and it was red. So if you can imagine, like, looking through a magnifying glass at a red light for an extended period of time, <laughs> uh, that sounds like a terrible idea. So every VR... Attempt was ahead of its time. I think Active Worlds, the the company I worked for, was ahead of its time. One of the things was just the internet wasn't high enough bandwidth yet. So mm -hmm. the user experience wasn't great. This was not ideal for dial-up. This was a broadband experience that was released in 95. Right. Yeah. Um, 
the other thing is that was before microtransactions. There wasn't even a good way to handle payments. This is before PayPal. There wasn't a good way to put money into the internet. And people were and very Bitcoin reluctant. Too. Yeah, no Bitcoin. People didn't want to put type their credit card into the internet. And so getting people to pay for things was very difficult. It got much easier around the turn of the millennium, around the dot-com boom. Uh, you know, a lot of payment processing came online and then it became possible to for people to pay a few dollars for something. But even then, it people weren't used to the idea. People were just used to everything being free. And it feels like Active Worlds... Well, Active Worlds should have launched right when Second Life launched. Because they ate our friggin' lunch. Mm. Uh, right, yeah. Yeah, so that's... Those are two big um, tech things for me that were ahead of their time. I know uh, RG Letourneau worked on making electric vehicles, but they hadn't the battery technology. I mean, even now, we just barely have the battery technology for it, and at the time, it was just not there. Right. Any Any downgrade to battery technology just, you know would have just such a dire effect on on the performance of an electric car like you, you shave you know you just take our current batteries and make them 20 percent less as good and it becomes just like who wants a car with a range of like 150 miles that's like <laughs> oh you could end up like running out of battery during the day yeah you know, you know you got a long commute and you want to stop for groceries on the way home and you can't because your car can't make it well and these were these weren't just like electric cars these were like earth moving machines oh that's not a good place to start yeah i think he i think he had diesel engines like running a generator to run the electric motors but even then it's not it wasn't super efficient so Ahead of its time there, maybe. Um, maybe anything by Freeman Dyson. Freeman Dyson's a pretty wild character. Is he the Schwer guy? <laughs> yes. Yes, the geodesic Schwer's. Uh, those turned out really well. For radar, yeah. Um, I think that's where he made all his money, too. But, uh, hmm, tech. I, I would also say that cell phones in the 80s were ahead of their... Like, that was too soon. That was too <laughs> soon. That's stupid. You're carrying around this giant brick. You know, if they call them brick phones, but a brick would have been more ergonomic than the shape they actually were. They were actually yeah. shaped like a giant staple gun. <laughs> yes. My Okay, was... so my dad was in sales, and he had one of the very first cell phones that you had, like, this giant briefcase in your trunk that you had to, like, install in your car so that you could, right. you know, use the thing from your car. And uh, I remember him pulling that thing out and being like, I'm never using this again. I upgraded to this. And, you know, it's like the, the vacuum cleaner that you stick on your head. <laughs> right. The, I mean, there was obviously a need for them, but it was incredibly niche. And it feels like cell phones weren't really ready to happen until the very late 90s. Yeah. Although a lot of this stuff has to be tried so it can be developed, right? Like, it's true. You it's gotta true. you gotta get the tech started somehow. So I'm not sure where the line between ahead of its time and useful first step in prototyping a technology is, but uh, a lot of this stuff probably falls somewhere in there. I remember um, people were talking for years. I remember here's how big of a dork I was. I used to listen to a lot of talk radio as a kid. You could just sit there and listen to the adults call into talk radio, and I thought, wow. These adults are such interesting people and they have all these interesting opinions. And now, of course, you you turn on talk radio is just, you know, it is just prehistoric Reddit. I mean, just like <laughs> idiots, cranks, and bad opinions. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, back then, maybe people were a little more well-behaved when they got on the air, but... Yes. Right. Oh, they, they were well-behaved, but there was a lot of hot nonsense. And a lot of people, I remember a recurring theme was always people thinking electric cars could exist right now, but the corporations won't let you. And, uh, sure, flying even, cars, but then you right. wouldn't use the roads. 
Right, but it was electric cars, but like the the existing people making cars wouldn't let it happen. And I was like, but like all you'd have to do is go out in the desert and show your electric car working. Like, and we've never seen that. We've never seen that. And that would be yeah. a hot news story. If you, if you claim that, 60 Minutes will show up anywhere you want and film you showing off your magical future technology because that's good television. And so that was like my first exposure to basically conspiracy theories. Talk radio. Very interesting. And, and people, a lot of people calling in, um, you know, like once a week, somebody would be like, so aliens, what do you folks think? And then, oh, we need to keep an open mind. I saw a weird light I can't explain. So clearly aliens. Again, hot nonsense, but I just thought the adult world was fascinating. Something that really bugs me is when people tell me about, not about like their invention, but like they have an uncle or like a grandfather or something who came up with this incredible invention and it was like going to solve all these problems. But then like they couldn't get anyone to buy it. And it's like this great tragedy. And as an engineer and they describe the, you know, like briefly describe the idea to me and I'm like, oh, hmm, I'm pretty sure that that, I mean, I don't say it out loud, but it's like, I'm pretty sure that that's just nonsense. And like he couldn't get anyone to buy it because it didn't actually work. Like it's <laughs> actually a bad idea. Right, right. Like someone was saying, like, I, I, my grandfather or something, like, invented a, a jet engine powered car and it was really super efficient and it was like all these great things. And I'm, I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, jet engines are incredibly complex, super high maintenance, and you can't turn corners with them because they're such high RPM that they've got gyroscopic effects. So, like, for a car? No, that's a terrible idea. Right. Oh, it's a solar panel that provides its own light, it's hooked up to a light bulb. So you, you, do, <laughs> yeah. you don't even need to be out in the sunlight. It'll work underground. I had one lady um, in my homeschool, like homeschool group or whatever. And this was when I was still in college, but she came up to me one day and she's like, Paul, isn't there some way that you could like have a, a energy storage and like springs or something? And like, wouldn't that be so much better than, than all this oil that we're pumping out of the ground? I was like, oh no. Oh, mm. oh. so I gave her the whole Ener lecture about like, okay, first off, where are you getting the energy to, to wind up these springs? Secondly, what happens if the spring containment unit fails? Like, that's a bomb. You invented a bomb right. that you carry around with you. Right, flywheels is another. If you're going to do something mechanical, if you're going to do something mechanical, use flywheels fly and not springs, please. You will kill well, fewer Well, even flywheels are, like, real bad news when they let go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so like, it's... And, and the energy and power density is just not very high like it turns out that fossil fuels are fantastic <laughs> and they're they're right. really just a great idea <laughs> right if you don't care about if if you have no care about what happens to the exhaust fossil fuels are the way to go and then, uh the vlog brothers had an amazing video on friday i i don't normally do this but i super appreciated hank green talking about so many young people, when they talk about these problems, they're always like, oh, people are so stupid. Humanity's so stupid. People never think ahead. And like, no, the people who invented the internal combustion engine weren't stupid and not thinking ahead. They were solving problems that you've never dreamed of. They had hardships <laughs> right. you've never experienced. Yes, their solutions led to new problems that we now have to solve. But like, can you imagine it just like, well, I invented this new thing. It, it you know, removes our need to do manual labor and it, we could make 10 times as much food with this. All right, let's do it. Yeah. Well, I don't know if something bad might happen. Let's just not invent it. All right, we'll just, <laughs> I'm going to go back out and start pushing my plow then. Yeah, well, and, and that's not how it works either, because, like, okay, not only do you have to not invent it, but you have to stop everyone else who's going to invent it. And how are right. you going to do that? Are you are you suggesting genocide? Because is that really a better solution than, like, you know, dealing with climate change? Right. And so I liked um, Hank Green describing it. The way he described it is 
this is a solution to the problem of how do I avoid watching my child starve? And yeah. like, yeah, of course. Like if you say, oh, how do I avoid starving? Then you can say, oh, people are so, but like when you put the weight on them of like, if you do this, the life will be better for your children. Yes. People are going to chase after that. So yeah, yeah. It's n most of our problems are not the result of evil. They are a result of us solving worse problems. Yeah, side effects. And, uh, right. And I really appreciate it. That's like my favorite Vlogbrothers video now. It's like last Friday's. I will link it in the show notes. Um, Do we have time for another one? Yes, we do. All right. Okay, very quickly. Um, We're not going to really cover this one. Dear Diecast, I was wondering if any of you watch the currently... The the Squid Game on Netflix. Have you heard about this, Paul? I have not even heard of it. Okay. Kind regards, Gallad T. Um, so this is like the Battle Royale movies. It's a horror film, but it's not monster horror. It's people being made to fight to the death horror. Mm. I am not into it. It's like, I mean, it's not as dark as like Nazi concentration camps. But it's, for me, it, it goes into that space. You know, it's bright and colorful violence. And it's like, I the idea of all these things is that just society's so corrupt, they're just willing to watch deadly blood sport for entertainment. So uh, this is like, first, what, the, the Hunger Games kind of, kind of thing? Yeah, it's Hunger Games, The Running Man, um, or Battle Royale. I believe that's where the term Battle Royale started, was this movie. Yeah, yeah. And Battle Royale too. And um, I do not enjoy it. I, I don't enjoy that. I mean, especially Battle Royale since they were all young people. And I am super sensitive about bad stuff happening to young people. And I'm kind of okay people getting picked off by monsters. But people being victimized by just callous, insane cruelty for entertainment is like so even if the heroes like tear down the system at the end i'm like i just want to i just want to vomit for the next hour like this doesn't make me feel good this is not entertainment this is packaged misery um so i hate it so i didn't even and squid game is a is a similar thing it it doesn't have kids in it. it. You know, the contestants are adults, which makes it slightly less hor horrifying, but not enough that I would ever want to watch it. If I were to watch it, I would feel bad for days. And I don't um, even have Netflix, so. Right, so, okay. Let's let's actually cover our real one here. Dear Diecast, lately I've been distracted in my Dark Souls 2, 100% run by a dreadful enemy, Fashion Souls. In short, I have succumbed to the appeal of dressing up my character in a mix and match of the various pieces of armor and clothing that the game offers. In Dragon's Dogma, I also su succumbed to Fashion Dogma, as it's called in that fandom. Do you guys have games where playing dress up with your character or customizing your car plane submarine can become a time sink? I believe some people like Skyrim for that, but I'd be interested in hearing your opinions. Veil vale, Tim. Um, this doesn't really apply to the games you play, does it, Paul? Not a lot of customizing in Factorio. Well, I mean, like, I guess Stardew Valley or something, you can do customizing characters, and Starbound, you can customize your character. But honestly, I, I do 3D modeling a lot, and so if I wanted to make a character that looked a specific way, I would just do that instead of, like, going through all the hoops of the game in order to do that it's like it's like a story where it's like okay well here's the game where you can write a story but you have to like do all these mini games in order to you know between each paragraph and it's like well i would just skip all that and just write the story and the same thing with the right. customizing character i've just i just make a character if i want to see a character that looked a specific way yeah for me it's so few games uh, okay for for me the superhero games were where where i really got hung up on this crafting oh, yeah. crafting your your perfect superhero like i i i joked about it in my series about star on chest but i really did spend you know i'd spend a couple hours crafting a character before i'd finally have the guts to start a new game 
And I think a City of Heroes released their character creator as a standalone app some time ago. So you can just like download it and just like make characters. And it's really amazingly flexible. That's amazing. The only other game that even comes close is the Saints Row series. Saints Row doesn't care what you do at any time you can like in the middle of the game you're gonna be a big beardy man um and you can decide you know what i want to be okay i'm a big bearded man in a trench coat and a top hat and i'm just gonna go into here and i'm gonna become a 300 pound woman in a tutu and then the game's like fine yeah that's fine and, you know, it, it doesn't care if your voice matches your body type or what. It's just whatever you want to do. It's all creativity. And they have, you know, they don't just have male and female voices. They have, like, zombie voice. And I think there's male, female, and Nolan North were your voices. <laughs> and it's, it wasn't even like Nolan North was doing one of his, like, voices like he wasn't like trying to be gravelly here it was just him talking in his normal voice and it it's actually super fun because it kind of feels a little dissonant with you know everybody else is overacting in all these cutscenes and then you have just nolan north giving a pretty a pretty straightforward delivery which makes it <laughs> vaguely comical sure and, and that is so much fun and I would love to do this in other MMOs. I, I would love to do this in New World. But, you know, modern MMOs don't want this. We've gone from being able to customize the shape of your face down to, like, nose and cheekbones and eyes. These days, it's like, no. Here, we made 20 faces. Pick one. So, <laughs> we, we've actually got less variety today. And even among the variety that we do have, you have less ability to, like control how you look um yeah it's super as you get nearer to photorealism it gets harder and harder to like allow people to craft their face and not have it look like absolute garbage um yeah so we lost something when we when there was like this perfect time somewhere around 2010 where customization was free and it was amazing and it was very creative and we moved past that and it became very restricted and they want to charge you money for it yeah well and, and part it, of it is that they realize hey we can just charge people money for customizing their character why aren't we doing this already right and but the thing of it is to me it's like you're going to charge me money but it's also there are so few options that's like why would i pay uh, you money yeah. is like pay money and you'll be able to wear the other hat we put in the game it's like <laughs> uh -huh. right it's like it's like there's not enough variety to like entice me i've got to make a virtual haberdashery script for blender so you can just like generate any any hat parametrically oh that's awesome yeah i saw a, a video about blender that made me laugh so hard because not because it was really that funny but because i thought i was the only one <laughs> all it is it was like a 10 second video it showed somebody open up a new scene delete the default cube then go to the menu create new solid cube and that was it that was the end of the video <laughs> and i was like i have literally done that exact thing oh man you know, you can just, like, save the default scene without the cube in it, so you don't have to delete it when you start up. Right, right. I've actually done that, too. Um, yeah, like, I, I think my default scene right now doesn't have the camera in it. Like, I'm just, if I just want to model, I don't want the stupid camera in the scene. I don't need that in my yeah. way. But, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was really charming. That was a funny video. <laughs> Not just because that's a funny thing to do, but because it was something I had done multiple times and I thought it was just me. Like, wait, I'm creating, a, why'd I delete the default cube? I wanted to start with a cube. <laughs> wait, I wanted that cube. When you right. undo delete, does it bring the cube back or does it make a new one? Oh. If you look up default cube blender on, on YouTube, there are just like hundreds of videos about the default cube. You know, like where the default cube goes when you delete it and like all this stuff. That's great.
It's so great. It was funny realizing that I was not the only one. And in fact, this was incredibly common. All right. I was hoping we would get through all of these emails, but we didn't. But we gave it a try. I, I talked too much again this week, too. Damn it, Paul. What is your problem? Well, thank you to everybody who sent in questions. If you've got a question for the show, our email is diecast at shamusyoung.com. We will handle the rest of these next week. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. Say goodbye, Paul. Goodbye, Paul. Goodbye, Paul.